All right, guys, do not freak out. As always, there is sound on this video. Uh, we just did a super quick unboxing on the Lenovo ThinkPad P1 mobile workstation. So what comes inside the box? Uh, we have our setup guide right here, right? Uh, also our safety and warranty guide. And we also have a 135 watt power supply and our power cable. So I'm actually gonna put the power cable hooked up to the power supply. There we go, and let's put this stuff to the side. Then we have the beautiful ThinkPad P1 mobile workstation laptop with a carbon fiber weave top. Uh, this guy is awesome, weighing around 3.75 pounds with a thickness of 0 0.70 inches. This guy is the baby of the P lineup, uh, not too long ago, I did a review with you guys with the P53 and the P72. And this is the guy that I would definitely buy for the P lineup because it actually has the power and the capability to do my everyday stuff on it. Even though it's a mobile workstation, it's one of those laptops that you would set it and forget it. But because of the lightness, I'm able to travel with it with no problem. Now the ThinkPad P1 has a lot of ports. Uh, it's not like the P53 or the P72. It does not have any ports at the back, but it does have ports on the left and the right hand side. Now if you have the laptop facing you to the point that you are able to open it up like this, on your right hand side, you have the following ports. You have your SD card reader. You have one 3.1 USB port. You have an additional 3.1 USB port always on charging. On your left hand side, you have your combo audio jack, which allows you to hook up a headphone or a headphone with a mic. You have your mini ethernet connector. The only downside about this port is that you have to purchase an additional accessory for this laptop to use the ethernet or RJ45. You have your HDMI. And you have two Thunderbolt 3 Type-C ports. And last but not least, your power port. Okay, so we just went over some of the ports on the ThinkPad P1. Again, like the P53 and the P72, there are ports at the back. The P1 doesn't have that, which is okay. And it's enough ports. The only difference is, is that you don't have a physical RJ45 port like the P53 and the P72. On this guy, if you want the Ethernet RJ45 port, you got to purchase a dongle. Well, that's not that bad. All right, so let's open this guy up real smooth to show this beautiful 15.6 4K OLED display. How awesome is that? Now, there's many ways that you can log into this machine. You have your fingerprint scanner right here. You also have uh, an IR camera to use Windows Hello. And the power button is actually located at the very top of the keyboard on the upper right corner. So let's press the power button to start this guy up. And let's log in. All right, so like I said before, there's many ways to log in. Right now, it's trying to look for my face to use the IR camera to use Windows Hello. Uh, but I'm gonna take advantage and use the fingerprint scanner. So let's place the finger and let's just log in. And there we go. All right, so let's talk about the trackpad on the P1. Beautiful, awesome, it just worked. I found myself using the trackpad about 95% most of the time. Uh, the other 5%, I actually use a wireless or a wired mouse but I didn't have any issues on the trackpad. Now, if you wanna know the measurement of the trackpad, if you take a quarter, a nickel, a penny, and two dimes, it's gonna measure around 3.95 inches. Now, the keyboard on the P1, super responsive, didn't have any issues at all. The layout is super self-explanatory, does not have a number pad like the P53 or the P73. Uh, it does have the track point, which is a signature for Lenovo ThinkPads. Uh, it is backlit. Using the keyboard itself, didn't have any issues. Like I said before, super responsive. The key distance between each key, if you take a nickel and a penny, it's gonna measure around 0 0.12 inches. For speaker location, it does not have a speaker at the very top of the keyboard. Uh, the speakers on the P1 are actually located at the bottom on the left and the right corner. The loudness on the speakers, it was around 83.6 decibels. That's not that bad. The display itself is non-touch, which is great for me because I don't like laptops with touch. Lenovo does advertise that this particular laptop does come with touch screen. It's up to you. It does come with anti-glare technology. For the brightness level, 
you are able to purchase a, a laptop that's configured between 300 to 500 nics. I think this particular review unit is 400 nics and the brightness level right now, this is the highest. Uh, yep, this is the highest and this is the lowest I could go. The display is HDR, which is amazing when you're watching videos. It takes advantage of Windows HD features. Uh, so when you're watching videos, it automatically turns on the HDR. When I was viewing a video that was actually captured on a HDR camera, everything was, it was like amazing. Everything was popping out. The colors were super vibrant. My opinion on this laptop is that this laptop is built for those individuals that like to record on HDR, uh, is into illustration and photography. Uh, Lenovo does provide you x right color assistant and it allows you to use different color profiles depending on what you're doing, which is huge, huge plus because it allows you to pick a particular profile. Like for me, I like to do Rec 709 when it deals with um, video editing. So this would be the profile that I would definitely use. Okay, so we just went over the display, keyboard, trackpad, uh, some of the ports and features on the P1. How about the performance? So you would think the P1 does not match with the P53 or the P73 uh, because it's light. Uh, that's not the case. This guy packs a huge punch. So let's take a closer look on the specifications. So if I right click on the taskbar, go to task manager, let's open up task manager up a little bit. Let's go to performance. Let's right click on the CPU, change the graph to logical processor. And this machine is actually running a one socket, six cores, 12 logical processors with an Intel Core i7-9850H CPU with a clock speed of 2.60 gigahertz. Now this is an i7 processor and the performance on this guy was great. I was able to use Premiere, After Effects, even uh, DaVinci Resolve with no problem. I was able to edit 4K without even creating proxy files with no issues. Now for memory, it actually has 32 gigs and I think the cap is around 64 gigs. For a hard drive space, it actually has a two terabyte solid state drive from Samsung. And for the graphics card, it actually has an Nvidia Quadro T2000 with four gigs of memory. You might be asking yourself, is this machine able to game with the graphics card that it has? Yes, I was able to play some of my favorite games with no problem. Uh, it just works, you know, no lag, no hesitations at all. The performance is there. I was able to do everything with this machine. For heating, I did notice that a lot of heating is around this area due to the heat vent is located like in between the display and the keyboard. So this little slot right here that you see this gap right there, there's a heat. So all that heat is actually, you know, projecting right to the display. So that's the reason why you get a lot of heating around this area. Okay, so we went over some of the specifications on this particular machine. I feel like the P1 matches the P53 and the P73 for my workflow. Right? I was able to use this machine with the particular specifications to do my everyday stuff. But how about the battery? Battery is extremely important because again, this guy is super light, 3.75 pounds. Uh, I'm able to travel with it without breaking my back, which is a huge, huge plus. So how about the battery? The battery life wasn't too great. Um, I like to use PC Mark 10 to do my battery testing. Uh, I only did two tests for this particular machine. I did the modern office battery life and it took around four hours and 50 minutes. And I ran a second test, which was video, it was around five hours and four minutes. Now I took it home, fully charged up, left the battery at the lab and I was just using it. And it really depends on how you use it. I was really using it with watching movies, a lot of video editing with 4K, trying to learn DaVinci Resolve, and I got the battery life between four to four and a half hours. Now, with this particular machine, just like the P53 and the P73, it does come with two modes, the hybrid mode and discrete mode. When I went inside BIOS, by default, it was on hybrid mode, so I would say to myself, why did I get low battery? You know, four and a half hours or four hours, that wasn't really a lot, right? I automatically changed the display mode to discrete because I wanted to use the performance. I was like, screw the battery life. Uh, I could always just plug it in and use the laptop as is, 
but for the battery, it kind of matches with the P53 and the P73. It, not a huge improvement with the battery life. Okay, so the battery life is not so great on the P1, uh, which is okay. You know, you can plug it in, you know, and just continue working plugged in, right? Uh, you are able to take the laptop uh, to travel with, and if you can't find a quick outlet, you do have around four and a half to maybe five hours. It really depends how you configure the machine. If you can configure it with the brightness all the way down, configure the battery to do battery performance, you could get around maybe six hours if you're lucky, right? So how about the pricing? Because again, it is part of the P lineup. The P53 and the P73 is super expensive. So how about the P1? I feel like the P1 is like for uh, those individuals with a tight budget. So if we go inside the Lenovo site, retail price for this guy is around $1,500. That's not that bad. But for $1,500, you're not going to get a high-end graphics card, a lot of memory, and a big storage. And especially, you're not going to get the 4K OLED HDR display. So let's go to the bottom. And let's see what do you get for what. So I'm going to go all the way to next, next, to the last one. The highest one that you could get for the ThinkPad P1 Gen 2 is around three grand. I would say, you know, let's say around $3,100. So what are you gonna get for $3,100 compared to the retail price one? So for the retail price, you're definitely going to get the ninth generation i7 processor, right? With clock speed of 2.60. For the $3,100 one, you're gonna get an Intel Xeon processor with a clock speed of 2.80. Both of them come with Windows 10. Both of them come with a 15.6 inch display, but for the low end, 1080p. For the high end, you're going to get that 4K display with an HDR 400, 500 nits. The low, the low end is only 300 nits. Hard drive space, 256. High end, 1 terabyte. For the low end, you're going to get the Quadro T1000 with 4 gigs and the high end, the T2000 with 4 gigs. So that's not that bad. Uh, one of the cool things, $3,100, you're going to get the IR camera plus the 720p. For the low end, only 720p. Now, don't get me wrong. You are able to configure this machine the way that you want it when you're buying it. Uh, I think the more that you add to the configuration, at the end, you're going to spend a little bit more money. All right, so let's conclude our review on the ThinkPad P1 Gen 2 laptop. Uh, guys classified as a mobile workstation. If I had to choose between the P1, P53, or the P73, I would definitely go with the P1. Uh, battery life was not great, but I am willing to travel with the guy with no problem and still do photo editing and some video editing on the fly. Uh, I just have to work extremely fast. Battery life is going to last between four to four and a half hours. It does have all the ports that I need. I was able to use an external monitor uh, using the Type-C connections. For the display mode, I would definitely take advantage and go inside BIOS and configure it to be discrete mode rather than hybrid. I'm not too concerned about the battery life because again, I could get four hours on it anyway. When the laptop was on hybrid mode, the battery life wasn't great. I still got around four and a half to four hours. Pricing point is not that bad. Retail starting price is around $1,500, but when you configure it with more memory, more hard drive space, you definitely want to get a better display if you're dealing with illustration like photography and video editing. And if you are doing HDR recording, definitely get the HDR 4K OLED display version. Upgrading this guy is super simple. You are able to get two solid state drives on this particular machine. Uh, you have two dim slots to upgrade the memory you are able to go up to 64 gigs of memory. And that's it, guys. That is my review on the Lenovo ThinkPad P1 Gen 2 laptop, classified as a mobile workstation. Uh, like I said before, if I had to choose, I would definitely choose this guy right here because of the, you know, I'm able to travel with it and I'm still able to do my day-to-day -day stuff on it. Gaming, uh, video editing, photography, and the display itself having HDR was a Amazing. Don't get me wrong, you are able to configure the P53 or the P73 with HDR. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this review. Don't forget about hitting that like button as well as subscribe. Please share out the video. If you have any comments or concerns, leave them at the bottom. And I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.